Hey, Paul ben. Who Holland. do we have next? We, Paul, we got Paul Holland oh, here. Who's this guy? I don't know if uh, hey. people know Paul. Hey, Paul, Paul is uh, infamous or famous. I'm, I'm not sure which, but Paul has the lovely distinction of being in charge of facilitation at CAST. What is facilitation? S- you know, so what? Explain, explain to the people what facilitation is and why CAST is different than, say, ah, okay. a, a different style conference. Because there is this part of, of CAST is really... One of the things I think that makes it different than the rest. Notice yeah. different, yeah. Yeah. The so uh, the the biggest thing is we put the confer back into the conference. The longest that any speaker is allowed to speak on their topic without opening the floor to uh, questions from the floor is two thirds of the time. So our uh, time periods right now work out that we have a uh, 50 minutes for the presenter to give their their speech and then uh, the at least 25 minutes of open season and in open season any question can be asked by any participant of the speaker and we encourage that and in the the talks I was in today um, the the number of of participation uh, people participating oh <coughs> this is the k cards we'll yeah talk about those we'll talk about those in a minute uh, well, let's let's roll back a little bit. So, open season or open session depends oh, right. on who you ask. Wh- it shouldn't. What it's is only that? Open season. Well, it's if open. you say open session, then they're wrong. That's awkward. It is. <laughs> the, the awkward turtle. <laughs> the Are we doing the awkward turtle? <laughs> that was yesterday, Paul. Wait, I just busting. want to bring it into today. Yeah, we're busting out the awkward turtle from okay. yesterday. Okay. Right. <laughs> so uh, during the the actual presentation, where the the presenter is telling their story they are only allowed to be interrupted by clarifying questions. What year did this happen? What does that acronym stand for? Something that helps the people in the audience understand uh, the story that's being told. Uh, And today, actually, in the three talks that that I was in, the three track talks that that I was in, the clarifying questions were actually very good. They were very poignant, and uh, I don't understand what you're saying there. Can you elaborate on that because of whatever reason? Oh, okay, yeah, great, sorry. I I used an acronym that you guys have no idea what it was. So it it was excellent clarifying questions. Once the uh, 50 minutes is gone or the presenter has finished telling their story, whatever comes first, then... Open season. Open season. Open season, anything goes. And uh, at that point, you're allowed to challenge the speaker. You're allowed to uh, ask them any question you want. Uh, again, the th- the, I, I did three track talks today uh, that I was in, and uh, the open season was very cordial. But I have also been in open seasons where the questions were a little more poignant. Uh, Pointed, po- even. Point, po- pointed, uh, <laughs> downright <laughs> offensive. And uh, none of those happened today that Any, I saw. No, it's of, but, uh, it was something else that usually happens is rat hole topics. Any anything like that from we either one of you? Actually, yeah, at Cast, we 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 tend to avoid the. the there's not even a rat hole card. Uh, have we talked about what these cards? Let's are? Let's talk about the cards. Okay. Now is now is an excellent time. So uh, everybody, when they register for Cast and they show up, they're given three cards. They're given a green card, a yellow card, and a and a red card or a pink card. So. Uh, At the beginning of open season, or if you have a clarifying question during the presentation, you hold up your green card, and this means I have uh, a question. I have a comment or a question that I want to talk to the speaker about. If, while one person is giving their question or asking their question, it reminds somebody else of something along the same line, or they want to add to it, or they want a, a, a slightly different question, but along the same line, the same thread, then you hold up a yellow card. And the yellow card lets you say, I have a question that's pertinent to the question that's going on right now. It's on the same topic, the same thread. And uh, the way the facilitators, uh, facilitators? <laughs> the way the facilitators uh, d- deal with the, uh, the, the, the threads is they exhaust one thread completely before they move mm-hmm. to the next thread. Okay. So that allows them to, uh, to keep the same uh, idea going in everybody's mind, and it l- lets the, the the series of questions flow. Let's the topic of, flow. Yeah, yeah. In, instead of going like, oh well, five questions ago Tim said this, so now I want to uh, 
And there he is. There he is. And and, and so <laughs> so I had a question on that. It, to, can we go back? Yeah, right. Can we go you're back trying to and, avoid. And and it, and it really disrupts the flow of the meeting. So if you hold up your green cards for new topics and then your yellow cards for the same topic, and then the red card, as I heard John alluding to just before I came on, uh, the red card is a, ooh, ooh, I must speak now. Uh, it can be used for, I can't hear what the person said. It can be as simple as that, or it can be uh, the example that John gave. Hey, I was at that project, so sure. I, I have pertinent I information. Here. Essentially, it says, I want to talk before everybody else. What I have to say is, is that important? So... So I'm a little dense, Paul, and uh, you know I understand I've, I've, that. Too. I've been to these I've been to these conferences for a while, <laughs> a and I room. you know I still don't understand why we even do this. Well, why do we do facilitation to begin with? That's an excellent question, Tim. Surprisingly, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, we didn't catch the awkward oh, turtle. Uh, the awkward, uh, no awkward turtle we'll at the time. Again. Yeah. So the uh, the reason we do uh, facilitated uh, talks. If you have an unfacilitated talk or you just allow anybody, the speaker, to recognize people, the strong personalities in the audience get to speak. The the lesser strong personalities, I'm not going to say they're weak personalities, but the, mm -hmm. the James Box, the John Box, the Tims, the Bens, and the Pauls would get to talk, and the the uh, introverted people would, would always be shut out. They'd never get to talk. The way that we do it is very fair. If somebody keeps raising a card and, and has been on the stack quite a lot, they'll actually get bumped lower and lower on the stack. And then if we see somebody new raise a card, they get bumped higher on the stack. So we're encouraging everybody to participate, discouraging uh, air, air time mongers and encouraging the, the quiet people to actually get to talk. And that more. gets back to your original statement, which is it's, it's about conferring in the end, right? That so, is correct. So giving everybody the opportunity to participate yeah. and be and a part of it. And uh, every year, uh, we've kept unofficial and, as I mentioned in the opening remarks, say unofficial and statistically invalid uh, um, st stats as to how much participation we've had in each talk. And from the numbers I've seen so far, we're blowing the doors off the previous cast. We've always seen an increase. Wow. I believe, if I remember correctly, the first cast, we had uh, seven people on average talk after, t after talk. There was one talk today that had 28 uh uh, threads nice. that, that, that was mentioned. Well, and I, I, if I remember correctly, and, and Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think there was a, a red card record this morning there, at, there the, was, uh, at there the keynote. At the <laughs> keynote, uh, the previous red card record had been three uh, at, at, a, at any particular talk, and we hit four. And we also had in my first talk that I did today, we had two red cards in my first talk. So, so I, I haven't seen that many red cards in a day before. And they were all actually pertinent red cards. It wasn't just somebody who, oh, I'm tired of waiting, I want to talk now. They were all very pertinent, uh, poignant questions or comments that they raised. So it was, it was very cool. So you, you mentioned that uh, you had a talk today. And uh, we wanted to talk just a little bit about it. Uh, agile in a non-agile world? Uh, I don't understand. Yeah, I, actually, I, I did two talks today. Oh, that's right. You Well, let's I, talk I was, about the Agile one first. I was first. busy. Uh, we don't yeah, care you, about the other one. Yeah, we don't yeah. care about so the other one. The other one was how to organize that, a peer conference. Ah, isn't the, this a peer conference? The, Done. No. Well. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not interested we in that one. We talked to John. We, don't <laughs> we care. talked to John. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, the Agile testing, in an, even in a non-Agile world, was uh, very well attended. We started out with 84 seats in the room. Uh, 20 more seats were brought in, and there w every seat right. was full, and there was actually still people sitting on the floor on the side. So I would guess we had about 110 to 115 people in the room. So I was blown away by that. Uh, what my presentation consisted of was uh, how I've been managing my team for the last three and a half, four years. Started out with, as Michael said in his keynote, to positive deviance. Uh, where I started doing things or stopped doing things that I felt were um, inappropriate, uh, a waste of time. How uh, so? Think. I had a, a document, the, the best, best example I can think of off the top of my head was there was a document called the QP document that we used to create. It took uh, one of my senior guys a week to create it. Uh, person, so a full person week of effort. It consisted of uh, the, the one that, the only one that I ever had made uh, was uh, 320 pages long, and it consisted of every scripted test that we executed and every step within it. And so after I'd wasted a, a person week of my tester's time, I, I asked the, the Quality Prime, why do we create this document? Who asked for it? And he said, 
well, a customer asked for it a few releases ago, so now we create it so so we we can give it to them when they ask. So it was just by default. It was by default because right. once a customer asked for it and we get, we created this document and it took a while, so then they said, well, let's have it ready. So if they ask for it again, so I said, well, how many releases ago? And they, oh, it was like three or four releases ago, and it hasn't been asked for since. No. So the next release, I uh, didn't create it. And I was told by the quality prime, you have to create it. Oh, sorry, the quality process junkie. Uh, we call him a quality prime. Uh, you have to create this document. And I said, tell you what, if a customer asks for that document, I will dedicate the week to it immediately. And no one ever asked for it. And no one has asked for it since that first time. So that has since been scrubbed from our, our process. But that was one of the first positive deviance that I did. And as Michael defined that, it's a way of deviating from the processes in a way that's positive to the overall, overall. process. So when you said it was three or four releases ago, how much time would you say that was? Uh, that was two and a half years, roughly. Three or four releases, two and a half years? So two and a half years ago? Yeah, you got to remember, I'm in, I am in telecom. I am not in a web app right. like you where so, you have a release every like time you take so I, a breath in. I, so I asked that on purpose. So yeah, yeah like you know, yeah. over two we, months. We release six, every six months to a year yeah, we have gotcha. a release. Yeah. And so it had been a long time. And uh, so, so that was the first example of a positive deviance I did. And then there was many others where uh, I started managing my team in an agile way where I, where I put up a, a uh, whiteboard uh, very similar to a Kanban board. And I had work to be done, work being done, and, and uh, work that was completed. And, and it was done in a, in a way that uh, each sticky represented a morning or an afternoon of work. And that was kind of what I was presenting, that and the documentation that I created. And the, the, the feedback I got, or at least around that part of it, was, uh, you know, I have some colleagues here that thought it was excellent, at least that part of it. The other thing that was unique, and I, and I think people need to know this, is that you're doing this in a regulated environment because yeah. you're telecom. Right. So it's, it's not your typical definition of agile, which was the point after all right yeah and actually it was it was funny because i i i just went through and presented what i had been doing and uh in the last few months i've started working with our agile teams we have gone into an agile model and i started working with our agile teams and taking on some of their stories but in the time that i had to tell my story i actually didn't even get to the agile part of the managing <laughs> agile and so it was kind of funny it was about 15 minutes into open season before i actually said oh i forgot I completely totally i forgot completely forgot to talk the about the agile thing. yeah part because i've been managing my team in an agile way for two and a half years before we went agile and so that was kind of funny when when the the product development director and i did some product owner training for scrum teams as we left the meeting she said you know paul you're going to have to move your team to an agile method as well i said Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I can do All that. Right, fair oh, enough. it's only been two and a half years. Arm. Thanks for paying attention to what my team's been doing. <laughs> uh, now she wasn't my boss, so but my boss knew I was doing it in an agile way, but she hadn't. Excellent. Well, sweet. Anything else? I think, uh, no, you know I'm I'm done talking to Paul. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm also oh, done talking no, to you. No awkward yeah. turtle. There yeah. we go. No awkward. Do you want to see an awkward yeah, turtle? Yeah, one more this time. This is yeah, the awkward one more turtle. time. There Thank you have you. it, folks. My grandma's gonna appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is your grandmother watching? Yeah. Is she, she one is. of the two or three people who are actually watching right one now? One of the two or three. Might be. Maybe. I think we might have more than that, but we yeah, might. We'll find out. Anyway, at some you point. want me to leave now so that uh, uh, the most attractive person D's can up. come yeah, on. Yeah. Excellent. Fair enough. Thank you, Paul. No problem. Thanks, everybody. Have a good rest of your evening.